Okay, Rose, I'm going to let Nicole kick us yeah. off. Okay. Great. Thanks, Neil. Um, uh, this is an attempt to try and create a virtual event for Civi CRM um, and work to the strength of the fact that we're, we cross a lot of time zones um, and focus on a crisis that's unfolding. I'm incredibly excited that uh, Donald Lobo is here. Um, and before we pass over to him, just to reiterate, as a Civi CRM event, there is a code of conduct, which just asks that everybody is respectful um, to each other. You can read that at, on Civi CRM website, and I can put the link in the chat. The general format of today is we have this one large session in this main main room um, and this will last for about an hour and 15 minutes or so, an hour and 20, then we'll have a little break and then we'll have breakout sessions with each of the speakers plus two more where you can have a more of an interactive question and answer and discussion around different subjects. And then we'll come back to the main hall just to close things off and, and see how it went. Okay, thanks. I'm going to hand over to Neil. Uh, thank you, everybody. Great to see you all. Um, and we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. So whatever it took to show up, thank you. The community thanks you, it's not just us. Um, at, at some of my IRL in real life events, um, I have a reputation for sharing a couple of quotes. Um, I picked a couple, which I imagine will resonate with you deeply. Um, Alice Walker uh, reminds us constantly that we are the ones we are waiting for. We are the ones we are waiting for. And also just yesterday, I received a note, as did thousands of others from Brene Brown, that goes like this. Only when diverse perspectives are included, respected, and valued can we start to get a full picture of the world. Only when diverse perspectives are included, respected and valued, can we get a full picture of the world, who we serve, what they need, and how to successfully meet people where they are. Who we serve, what they need, and how to successfully meet people where they are. And then she prescribes us with listen, learn, unlearn, know when to lead, and know when to let others lead. I'll repeat. Listen, learn, unlearn, know when to lead and when others, and, and know when to let others lead. So just let that sink in as best it can at this time, wherever you are. And then um, a lot of us are in very similar places and we wanna just acknowledge the impact on the global community, all in different ways the harsh conditions around C-19. And I'd like just to offer up 15 minutes of silence, 15 seconds of silence. You can do 15 minutes in your own backyard. So right now, just 15 seconds of silence just to honor the state of the planet with C-19. Hope you managed to take some deep breaths in there too. Okay, I'm going to hand it over to Rose. Thank you very much. That's a, a, a really lovely way to start. Thank you very much, Neil. Um, I, I'm just going to start our day by saying some very non technical things. So I've noticed already there's lots of familiar names and faces in the people attending today, but there are definitely, uh, we're expecting that there'll be some people here who are very new to Civi CRM or who are interested in Civi CRM and are here to understand a little bit more about it. So I would just gonna give you like three minutes tops introduction to Civi CRM and what it is and what it does. And then you'll be able to, if that really is your position, if you're a, an absolute beginner and don't know quite where else to start, then you can come to my session later on and we'll just, we'll do a, gen, a much more detailed run through. Uh, and so you can start to understand what Civi CRM is and how you can get the best out of it and what it can do for you. So it's a CRM system. It works with your contacts at its basic heart. It will uh, rec it will uh, record. That's not the right word I'm looking for. Uh, diff three different types of contacts. 
which is individuals, organisations and households. But the great thing about it is that it's really adaptable and I'm sure people will testify today to the wide variety of ways that CBCM can be ad adapted to people's uh, situations and charities and non-profit organisations. Um, some people will focus on membership organisations, some will focus on donations and using it to manage donations, or uh, some will use, use it to record all of their activities for monitoring purposes. There's such a wide variety of things it can be used for. Uh, we can use it to, uh, in a similar way to Eventbrite for event booking, uh, for memberships, for uh, case, case management, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, case management for advocacy work, that sort of thing. And it, there's, and even beyond that, there's a, a wide variety of extensions and uh, modules, plugins that will integrate with Civi CRM to extend it even further. There's lots of CRMs out there. What's the difference between Civi CRM and any other CRM that you can find? I think uh, Neil's introduction gives an in, uh, just a little taste of why it's different. It's different because we're a community of organisation, a community of contribut contributors and organisations who work together in a very flat hierarchy to make it a better product. So we, the feedback that we get constantly drives us to make it better, make it adapt it and evolve the system. Um, and it's an amazing community of people to get to know and to work with and collaborate with. And we have something at the end of it which is very effective and, and very flexible. Uh, if that, I feel like that's a very short introduction and some of you already know all of this um, and I, I noticed in some of the comments some of you have been around for seven years or more and, and I know that that's, uh, so your old hats, but there will, certainly if you're not sure if you're starting to just understand or starting to integrate CVCRM in your organisation, then we can have a lot. What, in my session it will be very informal, we'll probably have a chat about working out what, was the, uh, what people know and what they want to know and we'll We'll do it very non-technical that you don't have to know anything anything difficult uh, you don't have to know any developer language or anything you don't have to think too hard so we'll do that as an introduction and uh, i'm going to leave it there i have got the great pleasure to introduce you somebody who has been around for a very long time but not everybody has had a chance to meet him uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for lobo he was one of uh, the original creator one of the original creators um, and he gifted, if you like, the software to us, the community, several years ago. And uh, it's just really, I met him the, for the first time earlier this year, which I can't, it feels a very long time ago, but we actually had an in real life event in February where I met him and it was a, a real pleasure. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Loba. He's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, his background. Thank you. Cool. Um, hey, thanks Rose, uh, Nick and Neil for organizing this event and thanks for inviting me over. Um, it's really, really amazing and awesome to see um, where Civi is today, right? Um, and uh, the strength of the community, the participation of the community and as an open source project, um, uh, the way the community has grouped together and has made the project such a, a, a pretty good success, right? And I'm really, really proud of the work that all of us have done to be at this point. And it's um, and and I'm really proud of the fact that we were involved with CVCRM and that we started CVCRM like 15 plus years ago. Um, at least I'm not very really sure. Yeah, I forget the number of days. So it was really good to connect with Nick and a couple of the CV folks at um, Fosdem in Brussels uh, earlier this uh, year. Uh, and just get reacquainted back with the community and kind of meet the community. Um, three or four years ago, we took a I took a deliberate decision and Dave Greenberg followed up a year later to kind of walk away from the project. And I think it's really, I mean, it's, um, and I don't know if uh, many of you know this backstory and stuff like that, but at least in my perspective, I think it's really important that um, founders walk away from projects and let the projects succeed and thrive beyond the lifetime of the founder or even beyond the uh, interest of the founder, right? And so it was really good to, and uh, I was a bit worried about what would happen to Civi. I was a bit nervous, uh, but it's 
really cool to see that it's gone uh, gone on to greater heights. Uh, the core team led by Josh and Tim and Coleman are really doing a great job of strengthening the ecosystem, etc. So I'm uh, so just uh, just words of gratitude and, and um, thankfulness to all of you out here who make this community such a strong community, such an empowering community, and support each other. And I think that's the very nature and essence of open source communities. Um, and I just started an open source project, another open source project with Current, and I tried to get him to join this call and hopefully he'll jump on in the next few minutes if he's around. Um, and, and I think one of the most important things that we uh, that I've learned from Sevi is trying to build community from an, a very early stage and trying to empower the community is super super important, right? And that's how we make and, the, and that's how we build sustainable systems. And that's where systems uh, like these are really important for COVID. So if you really look at the deployment of open source technologies in the response rate uh, from ODK and Dimagi and Comcare uh, to all the COVID tracing applications, right? I think open source is at the forefront of it and has really helped uh, many countries around the world. Um, I'll try to keep my remarks short. I won't go too much into my new project, but I think um, just a couple of things from uh, from an external perspective and looking at SEVI, right? Um, I think it's really important that each of us in the community realize that um, we are a part of the ecosystem. And it's important that all of us try to uh, extend uh, our reach and go above and beyond what's expected of us because for the project to succeed i, I mean i think civi is already a success but for the project to grow even bigger uh, i think everyone uh, not everyone but some of us needs to make larger sacrifices and if there's one thing which i would probably recommend uh, or ask civi and i think this is true in general for all open source projects is um, as organizations, especially because we are such distributed organizations and there's no uh, muscle in each of us individually, but the muscle is there with all of us as a group, all of us as a community. And I think the one thing which we need to do uh, is we need to think bigger, we need to think broader, we need to be more ambitious. And, um, and that's what I would encourage uh, all of you to start thinking about, right? Because I think we have some really, really good stuff uh, within the platform. I think we do um, fairly good things. The question is, can we do better? Can we do 10 times better? Like, can we go attract, uh, can we build the product to be competitive and to be as attractive as many of the other commercial products out there? What, what do we need to do to make it leap 10X forward from where it is today? And I don't think that's going to happen if we just sit around and plan about it, I think it's going to happen if there are one or there's one or two or three doers uh, within the group who are willing to push it and who are willing to make the extra effort to make it happen. So I would encourage and I would challenge all of you, right, to think about can you be that person? Like, can you be the company which really pushes Civi into the next orbit? Um, and uh, and it would be great to see that happen, to see Civi continue to soar to even bigger heights, even greater heights. I Means I think you'll have done an amazing job getting it to soar to the height where it is today. And can we take it uh, to the next generation, to the next level? Um, technology is moving at a ridiculously fast rate. Um, starting this new project, right? I realized like, holy shit, this is so, so different from what the world was when we started Civi 15 years ago, right? And the way we are building this new open source project is a completely, completely different ball game, right? It's totally, it's super different from the way Civi was done. And primarily because technology has just changed and it's changed the ball game significantly. And, and I think Civi has kept up with quite a few of those trends. The question is, can we continue keeping up with many more of the other trends, right? Um, and so I would encourage you and challenge you to kind of reach out of your comfort zone, uh, step out of that box and um, help propel Civi to greater heights.